August 7th, London, I'm going to my job for the first day. Uh, yes, I'm Lithuanian, but got a job as product director in uh, Rails Bank. It's not a bank, it just has a bank in its name. Uh, we, do, we do allow people to get access to global banking, but it's a fintech startup. It's been around for two years, a bit more. It has already about 30 people, and I decided to join them, move out of Lithuania with my family and live there and work for them. But what I'm thinking on my journey there, what of my agile experiences, skills, in, from my previous start of Warape, as well as from all my coaching experiences, I can take and use in this company. So all my head is full with ideas. What should I do first? What should I do first? What should be main things I should start with? Any advices from you? What do you think any guy starting as product director or you know, kind of process perspective should be doing in a new company? Be yourself, good one. But if we're thinking from kind of agile ideas, buzzwords perspective, process perspective, what would you start your kind of listening? Good one. What else? Planning. What does it mean, planning? To make it, to focus, lock yourself in the room and make three year plan? Prioritizing, good. Other side of the, of this, of the audience? Scary question. Okay, so that's what it means you're a good audience. I'll share what I was thinking and how it worked out, okay? And thanks for those that being active. Some of you hit the point. So fast forward, two, two months here. This is the wall behind me in my office. It's still work in progress. As you see, there's lots of empty spaces. I didn't manage to make it perfect in two months, but that was not the goal. The goal was to start the process so I have something behind me that helps me to run my everyday job. And on the left, you can, you can see pink sticky notes, the big ones, and then the small yellow ones. So the first thing, what I started thinking priorities, as someone said, what this business is focusing on. What we need to work on first, then second, then third, and going forward. As any company, it's many ideas, many projects, many areas you need to work on. When you are here, if you heard uh, uh, Jan from Danske, he said also, we're doing lots of things, right? Anyone is doing lots of things. So what I did, I, I sat down with different types of people, different people in the company. I wrote down what they think is most important, and then we had a meeting together to prioritize. So we know in the company what features, what product areas we want to deliver. Moreover, not to make it our own ideas, these yellow notes, which you cannot read, are our customers, current or future. We want to identify which customers we're working it for. Some of them might be important because of the, their name, some of them might be important because of the uh, money they bring, right? So we know what we are doing in priority order, and we know for whom we are doing it. So that's a very good talking tool that I started using as a first thing. As you could imagine, before that, there was founders in this company, other people that were running around and trying to ask questions and want to do everything, and this helped me to visualize it and start talking. Second thing what I did is trying to split those big projects to as minimal deliverables as possible. Sounds simple, right? Everyone is doing that? I don't know, I hope, but in this company there was lots of big fluffy things, we need to do this, we need to do this, and they are in high level, and what scares me more is that high level big fluffy sentence goes thrown to development team, and then after three weeks or two weeks, they fight each other because nothing works and nothing delivered to the end, right? It's not bringing customer value. Even if someone writes the code, A, a it might be wrong code, B, it might not do what actually customer needed, right? So what the main job was to start splitting these areas, business areas, or these projects or products, the way you call them. You can see those are in swim lines, but trying to split to small, small things. Again, nothing fancy, nothing new, very basic thing, but a lot of companies are not doing that. You can think about your company and think, I really slicing your 
product backlog, your, your, your features in, in, in small, small deliverables. And last but not least, uh, I wrote less multitasking. <laughs> I would like to write no multitasking, but I'm a true believer that multitasking is one of the key issues in the company to go quickly. So you can see those columns are quite narrow to make sure that lots of stickers don't stick there. You can see a bit of cluster here, maybe too much, but we're trying to consciously avoid in the company multitasking. If any one of you had worked uh, in a startup, you know there is 100 ideas there. And it's very, very hard to get all core company aligned to work on a few things at a time. So that's my constant, constant fight. So from, it's, it's not exactly what was my, in my, my head that first day when I was walking, but actually this is what, it's my top three things what I'm doing every day uh, in this company looking from process or agile perspective. So that's one fintech company, one startup. Previously I worked in Warapay, five years, spent there, learned a lot. Uh, was it anyhow different? I sat down and reflected while preparing for this presentation. Visual priorities, yes, we did that. Yes, as a CEO and co-founder of this company, I was really focused on priorities. Maybe I was lucky, I was CEO and co-founder, so I had a chance to make sure what the priorities are. Uh, so no one, I didn't need, didn't need to argue with my bosses in that sense, of course, except board and, and, and investors. But still, we were trying to keep our priorities, understand why we're doing this thing and why we are going to do this thing later. Yes, we were very conscious to do minimal deliverables, and I remember endless talks with my CTO and, and development and other teams, uh, how we can split things to small pieces. And when being on the other side, CEO in that case, I had lots of things why not to do it. If we pack this and this and this, then we can make it one release because releasing an app, you know, it's very hard. You, you don't want to change one thing and release a new version of the app. But after long, long discussions, we managed to split it to quite small iterations. And yeah, less multitasking. We, I was consciously trying to avoid people multitask. And you know, we talk here, people uh, kind of, we need to not to multitask. Actually, I was asking my company, being CEO, people not to multitask. Do you think they really focus on one thing at a time? No. It's almost impossible to make people not to multitask. Even if you are CEO and, 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 and co-founder of the company, for some reason, people are so good, they believe they are so good, they want to help so much, so they always start working on five things at a time. And you say, but we agreed on these three priorities. Yeah, but this cool idea came in, I want to investigate it and stuff. And I'm not talking about here only developers, I'm talking more generally, there is salespeople, there is uh, operations people, right? So, when being on another side, uh, I, I really think that this is a communication that both everyone in the company needs to start talking and understanding why multitasking is bad. If you agree on that, then it's easier. You'll never stop multitasking, but at least you know why you're doing that. So, two, two months forward from my start in Rails Bank, ba bam, we have three employees in Lithuania, the middle ones, that started working in Rails Bank Lithuania. There is no legal entity yet, but we are getting there because I kind of managed to convince that uh, developers are best here and opening development center in Lithuania makes sense. We have seven of them hired already, uh, others starting, starting a bit later. And this is our CTO from UAP, UK Pete. You see what we are treating him, what dishes. On the first day, he gets Cepeline, uh, sour uh, cabbage soup, and kvass. Okay, good, good, good deal for for UK person, right? Okay, but not we're not talking here about food. What did we talk to developers on the first day? We said, guys, we need to see visual priorities from you, and we want to you work on priorities. We want you to split things to minimal deliverables and deliver to us. And we are not talking about code here. We're talking about business functionality. Is our customer can do this little thing? Can I do it? I know you will have 100 ways to say no. We are API company, everything is through API. You can release new API only when everything is finished behind the scenes. No, maybe we can use feature flags, we can do lots of good things, right? So those were discussions. And yeah, I was very stressing, if you start multitasking, I will fire you. 
Okay, I, I cannot fire them. They are not directly reporting even to me, so I'm joking here. And I didn't say that, but I'm trying to say we're really trying to understand and discuss why multitasking is not the best thing. And I know you want to do good things, but let's agree on priorities and focus. So I'm just trying to reiterate that those discussions I have in London with business people, with salespeople, with partnership guys, with uh, product uh, managers there, while it's exactly the same discussions we're trying to have inside the technology teams to make sure that those are aligned. So that's about startups. Anything differ if we talk about other companies? In the last 10 years, doing Agile, talking about Agile, and I've been invited to quite a few companies, not all of them are here. They're very different from banks to software development companies to uh, university, universities or Letovos Pashtas, I don't know what to say, governmental organization, right? Or uh, different types. Uh, and I was thinking, does it differ? Is it different what I was telling them when I go there to, to, to train, to run training, or coach, or advice throughout the years? It's very funny to read emails when you get a request to help with Agile. Very often it says, our development is slow, can you come and make our developers work quicker? In some sentences. What basically they mean, this is a picture of Scrum just to visualize, please come and focus on our delivery, how our teams work, right? how we can write software quicker. But if anyone was in my training, anyone was in any of my training here sits in the classroom? In the room? Oh, there is one, oh, two, three, woo, a lot. I think you can confirm that if I have a day training that company bought, half of the day, the first half of the day, I don't talk about Agile, I don't talk about Scrum. Scary, right? You paid for me for, half, for a full day and half day I don't talk about Agile and Scrum. Why? Because I believe the most important is to understand principles behind why it's different to do stuff in an empirical way, which is agile, rather than traditional way, where traditional way fits where it doesn't, or why it doesn't fit to your environment, why multitasking is bad, and why this should be a mantra of the company, why this drives priorities, and why priorities is good, why self-organizing and giving work to team is more effective rather than to, to give special tasks for the most effective person. If you're a SQL developer, I'll give you a SQL task. If you're an Android developer, I'll give you Android tasks. And that's how it's always been, you know, split by, 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 by functionalities. So we go through that discussion so that on the second day, I hope I can talk a bit about Agile and stuff with them, which is more. But most importantly also, I tried to, to drive discussion to this side of, the, of, of this graph, which is product backlog. Because I have a saying to myself, I didn't dare to put it on a, on a screen, shit in, shit out, right? We don't care how fast we build if we don't know what we build or if it's not the most important thing, how, what we build, right? We can write amazing software, but if our customers is not what they requested, it doesn't matter. So I talk a lot how everyone in the company, including developers, because mostly I talk to technical teams and only some of, of business side if I go to inside the company, why they should care about product backlog. We often say product backlog is product owner's responsibility. And I don't agree with that. I agree it's their responsibility, but everyone in the company should be helping to make product backlog good. Because I don't care that you're an amazing software developer and you can write code best. If your code does not deliver valuable to the customer, it, it doesn't matter, right? So I always talk to everyone, both sides, development teams and business has to understand and talk about product back. So why we focus so much on those technical practices or implementation? I believe everything is naming. Someone wrote Agile Software Manifesto, some clever guys, right? And they called it Software Development Manifesto. And of course what people read, this is about software technical practices. Although if you look at about the bigger parts, individuals and interactions, working software, result, customer collaboration, responding to change, this is nothing about software, to be honest. It's about the result, right? About communication, about processes. So naming is right, let's start first. That's why when you say we do, want to do agile, we always imply, let's think about how to deliver. Moreover, companies are complicated, especially bigger ones. Like we just hear Danske and other banks. They open, for example, safe, scaled Agile framework. They have good pictures. Can anyone describe me this picture in three sentences? It's lots of things. It's complicated. We need to create lots of processes. And maybe for some companies you need that, but not always. So what I learned to say is we say yes too often. And if you say yes too often, 
then basically your yes means nothing, right? If you never say no, then your yes is meaningless. I want you to say yes when that yes really counts, and all the rest time, please say no. That's what this quote says. Some singer, I think, told it. I don't know. Just, just, just. I like this quote. What does that mean? That means if we need to simplify things, let's simplify. There is a bit simpler scaling models. If you're a huge organization, maybe you can start with those, or even start with a simple Scrum of Scrums. I'm not getting to those. This is Nexus. This is less. But the point is just to show that there are simpler models, and always start simplest thing possible. But most importantly, if you talk to business side or business people, this is what you get if you Google business people. Fancy, nice, you know, looking, everyone smiling. Do they have skills to create a good product backlog? Looking at the pictures, do you think these people want, you want the product backlog to be run by them? <laughs> There's nothing bad with that. I'm just trying to exemplify that they probably were not taught these skills, right? They were taught to sell, to be out there, to think about big future. And technology guys become, we want to go agile, business people, please prepare good product backlogs. Otherwise, we kind of hate you and will blame that you're not doing your job. So what I want to say here, it's our job to train in the company how to work on backlogs and help business people to do that. Part of every developers, even testers, or whatever technical role you have, job should be spending time helping these people, A, to learn, B, to build a good product backlog. So to wrap it up, agility for me is incremental delivery, not of software, not of code, of business value. I always ask any team anywhere I go, what, how does this change the customer, the end user life? Does whatever you did today change that? I don't care what you do. All the rest is how we do it. I care why we do it. What is the business value? And what smallest, smallest things we can deliver it? That's for me what, when I talk about Agile. All the rest, yes, you have to know, and there's lots of things to do inside to get here. But the business goal, why we are doing on the level I measure your success is what smallest piece helps me to earn more money or customer to, to get the value from. So to finish, there is three advices that I want to give you to you that you can take out of this, of this today. A, play multitasking games in your company. Who played a multitasking game in your company in the last month? Oh, me only. In the last half a year? If you want people to believe that multitasking is not good, the only way to do it is to let them feel it and the easiest way to do it is playing games. So I need to, you to play a multitasking game at least once a month with different types of people in the company. And it's easy, you can do it in coffee break. If you need ideas, come to Agile Coach Clinic, we'll give you some that are easy to run. Why? It gives people to think. In Rails Bank, the first initial company-wide meetings, 30 people we have, I said, can I get 15 minutes of that meeting at the beginning to play a little game? And we played multitasking game. Because then it's much e easier to, to, to talk to them why we need priorities, because if we multitask, we get shit later. Do you want us to get stuff more quicker? Yes, we do. We just played the game. It proved it. Okay. Right? Second advice, focus on product backlog. Despite the role, from CEO to, I don't know, engineer, or whatever you, the grades you want to make. Everyone needs to focus on product backlog. I think last initial five years of my Agile experience, I was not doing that well. Now I, everyone asks to do that, and I think that's part of what every t p person in the team should be doing. And last, it's hard. You need to learn skills, and this is sale pitch, train yourselves. Go to certified Scrum product owner classes, specification by example, user story mapping, or different ones, or, or get kind of coaches to help you because it's really hard to get it on yourself. And I'm very upset that developers go to development trainings and stuff, but they don't go, for example, to specification by example class. By Goyko Adzik, for example, who's coming to Vilnius next week. Who? he'll be a star. On, on, he will also talk in, in Agile to Vilnius, but these are very important things for even the, the, the every kind of technical people to have. I'll skip this one quickly, because this doesn't matter, it was just a joke in the end. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy.